Hey, this is Jet from JetSpencer.com and today I'm going to be doing a book review for you. Today's book is Letters to a Young Poet by Rainer Maria Rilke. And Rainer Maria Rilke is actually a 1920s German poet. And the book is centered around 10 letters that he writes out to a variety of people. And essentially he talks about the creative process and how ultimately he created poetry and put it down on paper. So this isn't necessarily a self-help book, but there's some amazing and profound passages in which he talks about the creative process and how ultimately he let his artistic expression thrive. I'm going to be doing this review a little bit different. Typically, you know, I do an A to Z, you know, type of book review, but in this book in particular, obviously the author had no idea that these letters were going to be published at any form or fashion. So what I thought I would do is I'm going to talk about some of the passages and some of the quotes that really resonated with me, and then I'm going to share with you what those quotes are and how I kind of interpreted them. You can take that as you please. With that being said, what do I give this book? Four stars. So let's get into it. All right, this quote is at the very beginning of the book, and this will truly resonate with you, especially if you are someone who is having a truly hard time getting started. You are looking outwards. Nobody can advise or help you. Go inside. Discover the motive that bids you to write or create or paint or whatever. Examine whether it sends its roots down to the deepest places of your heart. Confess to yourself whether you would have to die if writing were denied you. So I see this all the time. You know, I get so many messages from people who say, you know, I want to start a YouTube channel. What do I do? Oh, I want to start writing a book. What do I do? Oh, I want to start my own business. What do I do? And they constantly are seeking outside of themselves rather than just taking the action itself. If you feel something in your heart, if you feel something in your soul, whether it be you want to write poetry, you want to write a book, you want to create a product, whatever it is, there's a reason why you feel that way. You obviously, your source of creative power wants to build something. It wants to manifest something in the real world. So don't seek outside of yourself because no one's going to have that answer for you. The only person that's going to have that true answer is yourself. So stop seeking outside of yourself for all the answers. Yes, you know, of course, surround yourself with mentors, surround yourself with good, positive people. But what you'll tend to notice, especially if you have an idea that's maybe a little off the rails or a little, um, you know, a little different than, you know, the typical idea. People, especially people that are around you, they love you and they don't want you to see you fail. So a lot of people will actually protrude you from doing the things that you know you must do. And what ends up happening is because you respect that person's opinion, you don't actually take the action because you then start to question yourself. So don't even begin with that questioning process in the first place and just take the action necessary. All right, this next quote is a little uh, rambunctious and a little bit different compared to the other ones that I've listed, but here we go. To have an entirely individual relationship to sex, not influenced by convention or custom, then you would no longer fear to lose yourself and become unworthy of your best possession. And I see this all the time where guys are constantly asking what's the best way to approach, you know, what's the best way to talk to a woman, what's the best way to have sex with a woman. Or if you're a woman and you're like, you know, how do I attract a man? You know, how do I provide the best sex to a man? Like, what do I possibly do? And can you imagine what the world would be like if there were no labels? You know, there wasn't a doggy position, there wasn't a missionary, there wasn't a cowgirl, this, that, and the other. There wasn't porn. You know, people didn't have really this huge grandiose idea about what sex is and what sex isn't. And that's not to say that's a bad thing. You know, if you're a guy and you want to recreate that porn scene you saw a while back, go for it. You know, more power to you. Same thing if you're a woman, you know, you read Fifty Shades of Grey and you want a guy to do, you know, BDSM stuff to you, totally fine. I'm not hating on that. But what I want to ask you is, if 
you didn't know about any of that stuff. And let's just say you had no sexual experience at all and you've never been taught sex and you never learned anything about sex or saw anyone have sex, but you have those natural desires, obviously, to have sex and you're in a room with a man or a woman, how would you behave? Like, what would you actually do? What would your primal instincts bring forth? That is the true authentic expression of you in your true sexual prime. And it really is just removing layers of social conditioning about what is right and what is wrong. You know, like, like he quotes, he says, not influenced by convention or custom. So that means you're not influenced by any level of social conditioning or influenced by any other person. How would you be? How would you act if none of these labels actually existed and you were to truly express yourself in your natural sexual state? Next quote, solitude will be your home and haven saved in the midst of strong conditions. And from there, you will discover all your paths. You know, in today's age, it's nearly impossible to disconnect from the world completely. We have our phones like 24 hours a day. In order to really remove ourselves from the grid, so to speak, you basically have to go out in the woods and you just have to go for miles and miles and miles because you're still gonna hear cars, you're gonna hear trains, you're gonna see airplanes. Like, it is nearly impossible to remove yourself from the human experience and truly live the true definition of solitude because it's only when we're alone and we're completely removed by any level of social influence and social nostalgia that we can truly understand our own emotional state of being as well as our own drives, desires, and goals in life. So I highly recommend that you should take the time to go out and find just a quiet place like out in the woods, like as far away from humans and people as much as you possibly can and just sit there and really contemplate your life without your phone there, you know, to like just ring on every 20 seconds, you know, to see like, you know, cars or people around, nothing to influence you at all. And just sit there with your thoughts and really, really think about the things that you want in life, the things that you desire, the goals that you want to accomplish. Because it is only in those moments of solitude when you don't have those added influences and layers of social conditioning that you can really understand your own psychology and who you are as a person deep inside. You know, before all the, the layers of bullshit that's been, you know, fed to you from the day you were fucking born. Alright, this next one's pretty cool. If only we regulate our life according to the principle which advises us to always hold to the difficult. What can now appear most alien to us will become most familiar and loyal. And this is just about for everything in life. You know, health, wealth, relationships, it really doesn't matter. Most people never even begin because they are so terrified of that initial troubling start. And in order to gain any level of confidence in any sort of skill set, you have to gain competence in that particular skill set. This is an evolved trait. It's nothing new. This has been around for thousands of years. If this was the first time you went out and, and hunted a wild buffalo, you know, thousands and thousands of years ago, and you've never done it before, you're not going to be very confident. And you're going to feel like, oh, this is, this is trouble. This is going to lead to trouble. But once you get to the point where it's no longer alien to you, it's going to be something that you love to do. So you think about the gym, you know, you first think about going to the gym and you're worried about people looking at you, you're gonna look stupid, and you're, you know, you're not gonna do a good job and you never end up going. You know, you, you wanna build wealth, you wanna build a business, you have this great business idea, you never start it. You wanna go up and talk to that cute girl or cute guy, you wanna go up and start a relationship, sexual relationship, whatever it is, but you don't do it because it feels alien to you. You're only going to reach that level of familiarity unless you actively go out there and take the steps necessary. And most people don't do this. So if you want to be head and shoulders above the competition, the easiest way to do that is to just take action. Because most people are moving towards pleasure and away from pain. And especially on the, anything that's worth it in life, you know, all that anyone ever sees is the end outcome. They see the Bill Gates, they see the Steve Jobs, they see the Warren Buffetts, they see the billionaires, they see the end result, they see all the wealth, they see all the, 
the massive mansions, they see all this, the travel, whatever, the girls, the guys, whatever, it doesn't matter. And they don't see that these people struggled like crazy when they first started. They weren't always just the gift from God. You know, they had to work on it. They grinded like a fourth line hockey team. They were just getting checked. They were getting kicked down. You know, they're getting in fights and it was a struggle until eventually they started seeing the patterns and they started getting confident and they started getting competent and it became something that was familiar to them and no longer alien. So take the steps necessary, grind through that shitty period of, of just pain and misfortune so you can get to that pleasureful peak. And we'll wrap it up with this. The myths of the dragons, which are transformed at the last moment into princess, Perhaps all the dragons of our life are princesses who are only waiting to see us once beautiful and brave. Perhaps everything is at bottom the helplessness that seeks our help. And this is for everything in life. I mean, if you just see every single thing that happens to you as just something to conquer, as something to grow from, as something to battle, as something to go to war with, as something to kind of trial by fire and reignite yourself and create a phoenix inside your own, you know, level of self-worth and self-entitlement, then you are going to conquer at life. Because deep down, a lot of these things that are in front of you that seem so big, like, you know, going up to a girl or guy and just saying hi and introducing yourself, something that seems so crazy is really something so sweet and charming and innocent and not a big deal at all. But we blow it up in our heads to be these huge, you know, megalomaniac style, you know, challenges that we have to face. Or like going to the gym, just going to the gym three to five days a week. It's pretty simple. You know, no, nobody does that. You know, over 50% of America is obese or fat. So you automatically, just by going to the gym three to five days a week, no, three days a week, just going to the gym three days a week, and just and putting in like 30 minutes to an hour or even just taking a jog or, or whatever, whatever your form of exercise is, that automatically beats. Just by doing that, you are automatically, at least physically, you are automatically better than 50% of the people. Just by doing that, just something as simple as that, you've already made yourself that much better. Same thing with wealth. You know, you want to start, you want to start a business, you want to start a marketing company, you want to start, you want to be the next YouTuber, whatever it is. Most people never start. And they never actually see that this big dragon, this big thing that they think is so hard, really in the end is something so simple as just taking action. So that's it. That's all the quotes. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit different than what I normally do. Let me know what you think. Give me an honest uh, you know, review of my own review, so to speak. Uh, once again, the book is Letters to a Young Poet by Rainer... Maria Rilke. And if you enjoyed the review, please make sure to subscribe, like, and or comment. Make sure to check out the book in the description below. Make sure to give that a click. It's only 99 cents on Amazon. And uh, once again, good fortune to you, my friend. Yourself. Tell yourself you do not... You do not... Poet enough. <clears throat>